Hi guys, my name is Aaron Lim. I'm a marine geologist in the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Sciences and today we're on the RV Celtic Explorer. The Celtic Explorer is Ireland's largest state research vessel and we're on this because we're doing some research in the Northeast Atlantic. Um, I'll just show you at my cabin window there. So we're about 300 kilometers due west of Dingle um, out in about 1000 meters water depth. And the reason we're here is because we're doing some research as part of a number of our research projects in the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Sciences. Um, and what's interesting about this area is that it's known for the hundreds of cold water coral reefs that exist here. Some of them are up to 12 meters in height, um, but some of the larger ones can be up to 100, maybe 150 meters in height and several kilometers long. So they're extremely large and they're built by or they're generated by cold water corals, which are sessile filter feeding organisms that trap on current suspended particles and they generate these very large lush habitats. So we're here at the moment now um, and we're trying to understand changes that are happening to the reef. Some of the research that we did in 2011 and 2015 show that there's been a significant change in the type of coral that's on the reef and we've also seen increases in the amount of coral rubble being produced and we want to understand why this is happening. So to do that we're putting down a number of monitoring systems called landers which we've developed um, within the UCC Marine Geology Research Group. We're also putting down a remotely operated vehicle to inspect these habitats and generate 3D models or 3D reconstructions and then we're also taking samples from these reefs. Now I'm here with a team of postgraduate researchers, um, all in the discipline of marine geology. And I'm gonna pass you over to them and they're gonna talk you through um, some, of the, some of the things that we've been doing. So one of these is called multi-beam echo sounder. It's a type of sonar that we use to map the seabed. Um, we're gonna have Luke, Luke O'Reilly. He's gonna show you um, the monitoring systems. So this is one that we're bef just before we put it down onto the seabed into a thousand meters water depth. Um, and it'll stay there for one year monitoring changes in the seabed. Um, and we're also going to talk you through some of our 3D photogrammetry and some of our other kit. And these are all going to be from some of the postgraduates at, at the School of Bees. And a lot of these guys would have done the marine geology or would have done the geology degree. Much like myself, I did geosciences in, or geology in UCC um, a while back. I then did a postgraduate degree there and I'm now working there as a researcher. So I'm going to pass you over to the team of scientists that are out here with me doing some of this research. Thank you very much. How's it going everybody? My name is Luke O'Reilly and I'm a PhD student in the geology department in the University College Cork. Now I'm part of a very special research group which focuses on marine geology. So aspects to our oceans and sediments that are on the sea floor. Deadly. And what what you have in your hands there, Luke? Um, so our research group are after acquiring uh, several ADCPs, and ADCP stands for acoustic Doppler current profilers. And what we do with these is we put them on the, the base of the sea floor, and there are several uh, recording systems at the top of your ADCP. And these shoot out different frequencies which measure uh, current speed, current direction and temperatures. Brilliant. And how would you get it onto the seafloor? That's a good question. So behind me we actually have a um, recently acquired Bentic uh, monitoring system. Um, and on this Bentic monitoring system we have uh, a load of bottles that are preloaded in here and essentially sediment falls through the roof here and into your bottles over, over a period of time. But what we do as well is onto this, this Fentic monitoring system, uh, we throw on our ADCP like this and you know we, we leave it on the sea floor for you know, up to a year. And that's what this current uh, research uh, expedition is all about, was going out to uh, the area in which Dr. Aaron Lim introduced you to um, and making sure that these guys get down there safe and sound. Thanks very much. Brilliant. I'm a PhD student at UCC Marine Geology Research Group and behind me you can see 
the uh, our Holland One, which is our remotely operated vehicle. Uh, we are just recovering it. Uh, we have been doing this dive for four, five hours now. We have been collecting video uh, data and also multi-beam data. Uh, this vehicle is remotely operated from the ROV shack, which is down there at the back. And uh, the pilots that operate the ROV, uh, so we can collect samples and data from the seabed. The ROV has two mechanic arms that we can use to collect cores, uh, coral samples, and uh, basically everything we need for our service. Um, this vehicle operates at a maximum of 3,000 meters depth, and we can use it to take images of the seafloor, and also, as I said, the multi-beam data, which is very important for us. For my research, I'm using the video data, which we use to produce the 3D models that I'm using. And uh, we are creating a classification method to identify what is coral, what is not coral, and also what is seabed, what is not seabed, and uh, other features that we have uh, in our ecosystem. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jared Summers. I'm a PhD researcher as part of the UCC Mar Marine Geology Group. Um, my background, I would have started off in UCC in my undergrad in geology. I did that for four years and I really took to the kind of mapping side of things, you know, dealing with the data in, in computer and seeing what we get in physical space. And it kind of really jive with what I'd seen growing up in terms of uh, glacial backgrounds and everything. So what we are, my role on the ship is, is to ensure that we have good quality mapping data coming through. And what we use to map the sea floor is something called a multi-beam echo sounder. Basically what this does is send out ultrasonic frequency sounds that people would not be able to hear or animals. Mm -hmm. And we use this to kind of measure the speed or the m movement of sound through the water. So we get the return time and we can use this to extrapolate the position of the sea floor. Um, another part of this data is that we can get the seabed composition so we can get an idea of whether it's made up of a sand or a mud based on the strength of the return signal. And this is an example of the kind of post-processing stage. So we've kind of exaggerated some of the features of the seabed so they kind of seem a lot bigger in real time than they do um, in real or a lot bigger than they do in real life. And what are those there? So these are coral mounds. So this is part of the what we call the Belgic Mound province. So these mounds are upwards of 100 meters in height and they extend over quite a large surface area as well. So um, we're trying to get in around these mounds into smaller in-between mound provinces mm -hmm. where we see smaller mounds occurring at about sizes of about 10 meters in height. And we're trying to see why these mounds are occurring at such small sizes versus these larger mounds right next door. Um, because a lot of these mounds are thought to maybe be a couple of thousand years of age. Mm -hmm. Whereas the ones found in the Belgic Mound province are kind of a similar age but have been found to thrive. So well, that's kind of what we're trying to figure out today. Brilliant bro, high five. <laughs> Well, Rory, how's it going, man? What's the crack, Lou? What's happening, man? So, do, you, um, do you wanna do you wanna explain maybe to the uh, to the people watching this video maybe who you are and uh, and what it is you do for the group? Yeah, so I'm Rory. I'm part of the Marine Geology Research Group in UCC, um, and you might have heard Larissa talk about the Holland One ROV. Yeah. So now I'm gonna show you some of that footage. <laughs> The high resolution footage Savage. from the seabed, um, which we can use to study very sensitive habitats. And this is fresh off the press. This is part. This is this came in today. Very nice. So um, obviously, high resolution footage we can use it for loads of things. 
and one of the main things I'm involved in is photogrammetry. Yeah. So photogrammetry basically is making a 3D model from 2D images. Hold up! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a second there now, man. What are you wearing? What the? What are those, man? These are um, styling, man. Thanks. This is what this is what's used on the catwalk. <laughs> so uh, photogrammetry, making 3D models from 2D imagery. Okay. So this imagery. I don't know. I'll zoom in there a bit in this. <clears throat> is obviously very detailed. Yeah. You can see different deep sea species. And with the click of a few buttons, we can bring the seafloor to life oh. as a 3D model oh, man. that we can use to study species that you'd never get access to. Of course, yeah. We can study their shape, their size, how many there is, and that information can be used to protect these habitats. That's incredible, man. So you're you're taking the seafloor, 900 meters water depth, and just like that, you've got access to it with a click of a button. That's pretty amazing. So you're in your masters now, Rory. And yeah. um, you know, when did you start your masters? I started my masters a year ago. I'm nearly finished now. Nearly finished now. I've looked at a lot of video footage. I've made a lot of 3D models that are going to be used to look at the sea floor in a way that's never been done before.